very welcome to this brief introduction to the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles of Jesus Christ. The material we shall share can be downloaded in a document by the link given below. We are the 5th of December, 2021. Let's get into it. We come to the second major section of the book, the Apostles' Witness to Jesus Christ in Jerusalem and Judea. In the first 21 verses of chapter 2, we shall read about Israelites who are baptized in the Holy Spirit when the Father, God, gives his promised Holy Spirit as part of regathering Judah and Israel, and how the Apostle Peter preached the gospel to Israelites by first explaining how the ancient prophet Joel had prophesied this event. In the remainder of the book, we shall trace how the gospel went from Judea through Samaria on to Gentiles dwelling in the region, and then on to the Greeks and to the Romans. So then, Jews or Israelites are baptized in the Holy Spirit, verses 1 through 4 read, Now when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a violent wind blowing came from heaven and filled the entire house where they were sitting, and tongues spreading out like a fire appeared to them and came to rest upon each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. If you preach, teach, or lead discussion groups, you might pose this query. What was the significance of the Feast of Pentecost? Suggested explanations can be found in the document that you can download by the link below. Two of those suggestions include it was the next big event after Passover and Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection when many Jews were gathered in Jerusalem. Others underscore the observation that all major events concerning Messiah Jesus occur on biblical holidays. You might also discuss where were they all together, that is, at what location within Jerusalem. Amongst the many suggestions, we share one, we, in the upper room where they were staying, and God brought crowds to hear them. Others suggest that they were gathered this day in one of the many spaces at the Jerusalem temple where crowds were already present. And then, what was significant or meaningful about wind and fire. Now those who were present and knew their Tanakh, including the prophecies of the prophet Ezekiel, they would know that wind and fire preceded the appearance of a flying wheeled throne, the throne of their God, Yahweh, revealing the glory of the Lord. Yahweh now returns to the temple from which he had left centuries earlier, settling upon living stones who have become the temple of God. Flying thrones on wheels for gods, as Ezekiel saw, are known from other cultures of antiquity, including Mesopotamia, the Greeks, and even early Israel. To interpret this event of the giving of the Holy Spirit, we might ask, in what sense have the end times begun preceding Jesus' second coming? To begin with, Messiah has come, bringing redemption and salvation for both Jews and Gentiles. Secondly, Yahweh has returned to Jerusalem and taken up residence in the midst of his people. Thirdly, Jews from both Judah and Israel are present. They will believe in Jesus and receive the spirit that Joel, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel foresaw. So at this event, at the Feast of Pentecost, also called the Feast of Weeks, 
or the feast of the harvest, we read in verses 5 and 6, Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven residing in Jerusalem. When the sound occurred, a crowd gathered and was in confusion, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Text in gray represents variant readings found in some ancient manuscripts. Some ask, was this a miracle of speaking or a miracle of hearing? Again, see the notes in the downloadable document. Verses 7 through 11, completely baffled, they all Completely baffled, they said, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each one of us hears them in our own native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and the province of Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own languages about the great deeds God has done. All were astounded and greatly confused, saying one to another, What does this mean? But others jeered at the speakers, saying, Ah, they are drunk on new wine. Those who interpret this text will ask, Why this emphasis upon ethnicity and upon language? Well, historically, there were seven great movements revealed in Scripture. At Genesis 11:9, Yahweh scattered them and their languages multiplied. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8, according to the Old Greek Septuagint and the Hebrew versions of the Dead Sea Scrolls, God had abandoned the Gentiles to lesser gods. The prophet Isaiah, in chapter 2, predicted that all nations would one day return to Yahweh. Jeremiah explained that Yahweh scattered Israel amongst the foreign nations following their apostasy, that they might learn never again to worship false gods. Thus, Jesus, at the conclusion of his ministry, gave orders to his apostles to go make disciples of every ethnicity, that is, every nation, all the Gentiles. Thus, in the futuristic book of Revelation, we have a foreview of men, women, boys and girls from every nation, tribe, people, and tongue worshiping the Lamb of God. As the apostle Peter begins to preach to these Israelites, he explains how this event at Pentecost fulfilled a prophecy made by the prophet Joel someplace between the ninth and the 5th century before the Common Era. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed them, You men of Judea, and all you who live in Jerusalem, know this, and listen carefully to what I say. In spite of what you think, these men are not drunk, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Whence came Peter's courage, his recall, and his eloquence? Whence came Peter's courage, his recall, and his eloquence? Well, these were manifestations of the gift of prophecy that had just been given. It is worth noting that the content of biblical speaking in tongues was prophecy. In Acts 10.45 it says, They began to speak in tongues, telling the great deeds of God. And in chapter 19, verse 6, they spoke with tongues and prophesied. This is an example of a Greek literary device called hendiades. A complex idea is expressed by two words connected by a copulative conjunction, which we could translate, they began to prophesy in other languages, languages understood by the Jews who were present. We continue with verse 16. But this is what was spoken about through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it will be, God says, 
that I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men will see visions, and your old men will see dreams. Now the phrase all people, or all flesh literally, this does not mean numerically all, but rather all kinds of people, which includes men and women, youth and elderly, even on my servants, both men and women, that is, without regard to social status or to gender differences. Peter then underscores it by repeating the words, and they will prophesy, which is what Peter was doing at that very moment. And I will perform wonders in the sky above and miraculous signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will be changed to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Those of you who know the Bible well, you understand that the day of the Lord is an end time event that we still await. But before that time comes, even now, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How did Peter dare insert words into Joel's prophecy? Please see the downloadable document. And what about the other wonders that Joel had predicted? Well, these in fact had very recently come to pass. In Matthew 27, 45, at the event of Jesus' crucifixion, darkness came over the land. And that same day, the earth quaked and the rocks were split. And on the day of Pentecost, a sound was heard from heaven, thus fulfilling the other details of this passage from Joel. So then, what shall we do? From this text, there are four great privileges that come to all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, be they Jewish, be they Gentile. Just as the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, we too may be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Galatians 5.18 instructs us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, in Greek, an iterative present tense verb meaning do this often. Acts 2.17, just as the early Christians did, we too are to seek to prophesy, to make prophetic utterances a regular part of our gatherings. In Acts 2.18, following the promise of youth having vision and the elderly having dreams, Acts 10 verses 3 and 17 tell how we can benefit from visions for the planning and projecting of Christian ministry and outreach. And then Acts 2.21, To this day, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9, If you will believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead and confess that Jesus is the Lord, you will be saved. At our next study, we shall look at a prediction made by the prophet Nathan and how it was fulfilled at the day of Pentecost, and then how the prophet David's predictions have been fulfilled by the crucifixion and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God the Father cause his love to well up within your hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to you.